Good evening and welcome to Emerge, our midweek booster service. My name is Blessing Okwale and I'm privileged to be the one leading us in service this evening. I want to thank my pastor, Wale Afeluma, and the leadership of the church for this great privilege. I do not take it for granted. I'm here to encourage you this evening that God will meet with you right where you are, in your office, in your home, in your sitting room. Just ensure that you eliminate every form of distraction so that you can receive from heaven because God has a package with your name on it tonight. Praise the Lord. As a, as a modern day evangelist, it is our responsibility to share the gospel to as many people in our sphere of influence. So I would like to encourage you to hit the share buttons right now and share this message to all your followers. Share it on every platform that you can and God bless you as you do so. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to worship you. What a privilege to be called by your name and to be called into your presence. We give you praise, mighty God. Tonight our gathering is unto you and you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to our image service tonight. We welcome you. You take the best place and the highest place in the name of Jesus. Do that which only you can do. Tonight I ask that you will transform destinies for the glory of your name in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that tonight questions in the heart of people watching will be will be answered in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that problems will be solved. I pray that needs will be met in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory ahead of the things that you are set to do in our midst this evening. Thank you, mighty God. We give you all the praise, Lord. Hallowed be your name, Lord, forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I will be inviting Inspire to lead us in worship. But if you haven't done so, please share the service on your social media pages. Thank you.
for joining us for service once again. I will be talking to us this evening on what I have titled, Are You Calling? And once again, I want to thank my pastor, Wale Afelumo, and the leadership of the church for this great privilege. Are you calling is a question. If you have your Bibles, and um, which you should have, please turn with me to Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, and after that we'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I will read that in the message translation. It says, call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. I like that part, that you could never figure out on your own. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11 and 12. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that has been freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. If you find yourself in a situation, a dire situation where you are, you are asked to do anything to get yourself out of that situation or to make that situation better, would you do it? Yeah, for me, yes. The answer is yes, I'll do it. And I believe for you too, the answer is yes, you will do it anything and everything to get yourself out of a situation, especially when what you are required to do does not infringe on any moral ethics or your belief. You know, the word of God is so interesting. It's filled with awesome promises of God to give us an amazing life, both here on earth and even after here. You know, God has promised us healing. You see scriptures like, I wish you above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as you so prosper. You see scripture like, ask of me and I will give you the utmost part of the earth as your inheritance. What an awesome God we serve. And the good thing is that God is true to his word. 
For every promise that he has made to us, he's eager to fulfill it. He's eager to bring it to pass. That's the amazing thing about this God that we serve. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a part to play. Of course, we have a role to play. And one of such parts we have to play or we're expected to play in the fulfillment of God's promises in our lives is where we have just read from Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He said, call to me and I will answer. You see, our part is so short. He just say, call to me. And then the next thing is all over to him. But the question I came to ask you tonight is, are you calling? You might think you are calling. But are you really calling? God has promised us that he will show us great and mighty things. Things that we cannot figure out on our own, by ourselves, in our human understanding. He said he will show them to us. But the requirement is simple. It looks simple. Call to me. But many of us are not doing the call. Let's see examples of some people that called God and God intervened in their situation. You see, the Israelites, they had the promise of God on their lives, even while they were in a strange land. But while God was taking them away from Egypt to the promised land, each time they encounter God, you will hear scriptures say things like, and they cried out to God and he heard and he answered. And he cried out to God and he heard and he answered. You remember Anna? Hannah, who didn't have a child, she was in the temple and she cried out to God and God heard. How about Peter, our brother Peter? So Peter was walking on the water. How nice, I would like to walk on the water someday. <laughs> so Peter was walking on the water and then he took his eyes off Jesus for one reason or the other and he began to sink. And he was going to sink, but he, he, he cried out, he called out to say, Jesus, save me. And Jesus stretched forth his hand and saved him and led him to the boat. How about the blind man called Bartimaeus? He was sitting at his usual spot of begging and all of that. I believe Jesus walked past him, literally. But he had to cry. He, he cried out with a loud voice, the Bible says. Say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Are you calling? So many of us are doing so much. We're doing so much to get ourselves out of situations that we find ourselves that are not pleasant. But we're doing everything else except the one thing that we have been asked to do. We struggle so much to get ourselves out of things, but we do not call. And for those of us who happen to call, like we try to call, we're either calling the wrong people or the wrong things. You see us calling on our job when you rely on your, on your salary to get things done, when you rely on your connection, family background, um, certificates and qualification that you have gathered. These are all earthly things. The Bible did not say call on to your job. He did not say call on to your salary. He did not say call on to, to your family connection or background. He said call on to me. So for many of us who think we are calling, we are actually calling on the wrong things or the wrong persons. You see, we jump out of our houses every morning and like, oh, I have an appointment with this person. I need to go talk to him about that contract. I need to go talk to him about this job. But most of us, we don't even pray to God first. We don't call on the person who is able to convince the mind of the person you are going to meet even ahead. Are you calling? We call on everyone else except the one who has promised to answer. Hallelujah. So what is not a call? <laughs> Murmuring is not a call. Yeah, so many of us, we just grumble about a whole lot of things that are not going right, but we never call. We never, we never make the call. Murmuring doesn't make the problem go away. A complaint, complaining, so I woke up the other day and I felt a sharp pain on my neck, back of my neck. And I'm like, why do I feel this sharp pain at the back of my neck? But I didn't do anything about it. I just left it like that. I was going about my normal duties. And midday, the pain was still there. And then it occurred to me, I haven't made any call regarding that pain on my neck. And I had to just make a call. I, I did that. 
And then I didn't even remember again, but I know that I didn't find the pain again. Complaining is not a call. Worrying is not a call, people. It doesn't matter how many times you worry about it, you have sleepless nights about it. If the sleepless night is not making, is not used to make the call, it is not helping the situation. So it doesn't matter how many times you go and like, oh my God, this is my health, this is my situation, this is my joblessness, this is my singleness. It doesn't matter how many times you worry about it. It doesn't matter how many times it keeps you awake at night. It is not a call. Fear is not a call. We have fear of uncertainties. How will this situation turn out? How will I get myself out of this situation? It is not a call still. Yeah, fear looks good sometimes to the body, but it is not a call. Activity is not also a call. Yeah like just hustling on your own the bible say by strength shall no man prevail so also activity doing a lot of activity and just not doing the right thing that you've been asked to do making the call first is also not a call what you've been called what you've been called to do is to make a call so what is this call then this call means to formally ask god to do something about your situation. Formally, you are asking God to do something about your situation. It means a deliberate invitation to divinity to step into your situation. A deliberate invitation to divinity to step into your situation. You are making an invitation when you make the call. And when you send the invitation, it is then time for God to show you solutions. God doesn't run out of ideas. He doesn't run out of solutions either. God doesn't run out of how to, to just fashion our lives to turn out the way that we would give him glory. But we only need to follow the script in Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He say, call unto me and I will answer. He said he will reveal to us mysteries. He will unveil things that our human mind wouldn't have thought about to us. But we need to call. Hallelujah. I believe God is constantly on the lookout for someone he can unveil an entirely different aspect of himself to daily because it's inexhaustible. Everything you know about God right now is still limited. There's still more from where those came from. And God is looking every time. He said, who, who is ready? Who is calling me right now that I can unveil this part of me too? That I can unveil this part of my glory too? That I can unveil this part of my... You know, it was with someone that God started to heal cancer. It was with someone that God started to, to, to give a child to. After medically, it has been proven that that person has hit some persons, some menos, menopause, some even menopause stop. But God still stepped into the situation. So he's still looking, his eyes are still searching, his ears still open, looking for that person or waiting for that person that will call so that he can show himself to us. So how do we call? How do we call? We do not call someone we do not know. If I call you, it means I have your phone number, right? Like we've exchanged contact or, that, or I have access to where to get your contact and then I will dial your number. So also, we cannot call someone that we do not know. Some of us are calling on a God we do not know. And we are asking for things we do not believe are right, rightfully ours. So that call can amount to noise. What you call call right now can actually be a noise. A call to God begins at the place of intimacy with him. At the place of interaction with the spirit of God. That is where a call begins. And where the Bible talks, where we read before in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 and 12 he say for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God 
The Holy Spirit is the one who knows the Spirit of God because it's the Spirit of God. So you cannot make a call to God correctly if you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit or do not have interaction with the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has exact knowledge of all things. He knows even the secret counsels of God. You know, when we say, God, your will be done, your will be done, it is the Spirit of God. You see that part in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, where the Bible talks about the Spirit of God makes intercession for the same. He makes intercession to God according to the will of the Father because he knows the Father. He is with the Father. And I believe something. If the Spirit of God can speak to God about us by making intercession on our behalf, it also means that the Spirit of God can talk to us about God, revealing the heart of the Father unto us. What a glorious privilege that is. If only we can just have that personal relationship with the spirit of god it is the spirit of god that knows the mind of god so for us to be able to make this call accurately we must have interaction a call begins at the place of intimacy the place of interaction with the spirit of god hallelujah the relationship with the holy spirit is built at the place of prayer at the place of study at the place of fellowship sweet communion with the person of the Holy Spirit. You know how it is that we, we, we just feel this distant thing about the Holy Spirit. Like I have a friend, during the lockdown we were always together, maybe five times out of the week we are together, <laughs> even when it seemingly we are on lockdown. This person, and the more I spent time with her, the more I got to know her, the more I got to know things that she liked, things she doesn't like, how she, she, she reacts, things she won't take kindly, and all of that because I kept spending time with this person. The Holy Spirit is a person, is a person, is a person with feelings and emotions, the Bible says. So for us to get to know the Holy Spirit and have an, we must have a communion, we must have time of the day that we set aside to interact with this person. This person that knows the heart of the Father. This person that if I get to know him, if I get to build a relationship with him, I will be able to connect to heaven. Place of prayer. So many of us, our altars have gone cold. Yeah, it looks like it's a good excuse. The world is fast moving. Things are moving so fast, so very fast. Sometimes you wake up, the next thing on your mind is how to get your work done, how to meet up with deadlines, how to get your kids ready, how to just look for all the things. But the one thing that matters most, we must set a time to interact with this person called the Holy Spirit in the place of prayer, communing with him, tell him, telling him about your situation, telling him, asking him to reveal the mind of the Father. The Bible says he knows the mind of the Father. And so many things that we go through in life, it is because of the limited understanding of the person of God that we have. If we get to know more about God, I believe that knowledge illuminates. Knowledge illuminates. The more you know, the better you become. There are some things that if God revealed to us about our situation, we just tell the devil, just stay one side. You won't even allow the devil because you will see how the devil is trying to distract you from certain things. Why? because you know the heart of the Father concerning that situation. If Mary and Martha knew that Lazarus' death, um, death wasn't unto, like forever, it wasn't the final thing, but it was to reveal the glory of God, I'm sure they wouldn't have wasted their time and tears crying, knowing the heart and the mind of the Father. Hallelujah. Promises are not given to override prayers, but to encourage it. I believe that very much. When we receive the prophecies of God, we receive them so we can use them to wage a war. So also when we come across the promises of God in the Bible, it is so that it can help us stand well at the place of prayer. You know you're right. The Bible says where we read also, he said, 
through this, when we have interactions with the Holy Spirit, we get to know the heart of the Father consigning the things that are rightfully ours, the things that have been given to us. I read in the scripture and I see that God has said, I wish you above all things that you prosper and be in health. Where the Bible says there shall be none feeble amongst us. And I stand there. Now that promise has become my weapon of warfare. That is what I wage war with. And it is at the place of prayer that we wage war. For the Bible says that our fight, our battle, is not against a physical being. We wage spiritual warfare. And it is at the place of prayer. So the promises of God, it's not given to us so that we can just chill. They are given to us so that we can just take them and wage a war and contend for the things that rightfully belongs to us. Hallelujah. For so many of us, our level of faith is dependent on our knowledge, our level of knowledge. I said that before, in a way. Enlightenment is a faith booster. If God opened your eyes to see things, why you have to endure some things, why you have to go through some situation, if you know the heart of the Father, nothing frets you. Nothing moves you. Nothing frazzles you. You remain because you know that you are planted on Christ the solid rock. The one who has promised his word that cannot fail. The one who has said that heaven and earth will pass away but his word will remain. The one who honors his word even above his name. You know that he's the one and you know what he says consigning that situation. You know when he's telling you to wait a little longer. You know when he's telling you not to take that job. You know when he's telling you not to get into that business contract. You know when he's telling you not to make that decision at that particular time. What a joy it is to know exactly what to do. Because what gets us into desperation, frustration and getting into depression, it's because sometimes we move around life confused not sure about what we need to do hallelujah it is the great gracious illumination from the spirit of god that causes us to know things that are truly ours. when the holy spirit illuminates your heart you know that this belongs to me satan no you cannot take my marriage away satan no you cannot take my child away you cannot take my health away you cannot leave me in poverty because christ became poor so that through his poverty I will become rich. The gracious illumination, but it is given by the Spirit of God. And it is through that knowledge that you can make the call. So are you making the call? Are you making the call the right way? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to conclude very shortly. You know, in spite of what is going on in the world right now, 2020 has been an amazing year. An amazing year. We are already in August and it, it, it feels like, I mean, it was just March yesterday. But glory to God, in spite of all that is going on in the world right now, and even in your life, God is consistent through the times, through the crisis, through the ages. God is very consistent. He doesn't change his mind on his word or his promises. The word as we know it may have changed, but the word of God and the promises of God hasn't changed one bit. It still remains the same. God is still the way maker. God is still the miracle worker. God is still the light in the darkness. He's still the promise keeper. He's still working miracles daily in our lives. He's still making people's lives better. He's still giving children to barren women. He's still giving husbands to, to ladies. He's still giving wives to men. He's still healing sick bodies. God is still healing cancer. God is still raising the dead. He hasn't changed. But we need to call him. We need to give him an invitation. Don't run around the whole world seeking solution from people that cannot give it to you. Because anything a human being can solve for you, it is God who has enabled them to do that for you. God is still moving. He's still changing destiny. He's still touching lives. But he said, call unto me. When you do the calling, leave the answer to me. How I will answer, it's not your problem. Your part do the call. My part, I answer. And when I answer, it will not just be 
for the things that you need. I will give you insights to life, insights to solution, solution like the world has never seen before. I will give them to you. That is the promise of God. And for me, I am so pleased that I have someone who has assured me that if only I can make a call. So you remember my first question? If you are given a chance to, to, to do anything to change your situation for the better, would you do it? Are you ready to make the call? <laughs> if you are ready to make the call this evening, just right where you are, you can get in the mood of prayer as I lead us to pray. And we are going to make the call this night. The heaven is open and God is attentive because he is expecting, he's waiting for us to call. And tonight we are going to call in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to appreciate God where you are. Thank him for the privilege that we can call him. What an honor it is that we can call him. And we are not, we are not confused about his his position he says when you call i will answer if you can believe if you have ever believed every any any other promise of god it means you can believe this one because if the promise you are standing on that you believe is real then this one also is real it doesn't matter the situation he said call to me so let us thank him for an opportunity the privilege to have him as our father that we can call to Libra hande ko celebro si tayara bosa en talibra hande ge libro sotori ba hande ke celebra handa ranima joto li kayebra hande ke celebro sia i la bro se ke libra handa ka si la bro sente libra handa e barreto zika ida hande bra soto lida father we thank you for your word the entrance of your word gives light it gives understanding mareto zika lebra ta what an awesome privilege to be able to call on to you and know and be assured that you will answer we thank you father we thank you father tonight i decree that the heavens be open and be attentive to the call of your children in the mighty name of jesus in jesus name we are praying in jesus name we are praying second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 second corinthians 10 5 you know one of the things if, if you are if you are a mobile phone user you know that one of the things that interferes with a call is noise network interference like you dial a number and then it goes to to or you hear all those weird sounds it means the person at the other end cannot even hear you and this noise can be uncertainty it can be fear it can be complaint it can be delay it can be anything it can be confusion that is why we're going to start from there we're going to eliminate every noise in our lives that is hindering us from connecting to heaven or our core connecting to heaven you know where there is a noise in your life so you are going to silence every noise in second corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 the bible says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of christ hallelujah so you are going to bring every noise to the obedience of christ in the name of jesus christ leko bazita e kayera honda e libra do santa libra que se libra cosete libra handa mai e cose libra tosa tiara i pray against every noise in in my life in the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice right now in the name of jesus i decree be quiet be silent in the name of jesus we want to hear our father's voice we want to make a call to heaven therefore anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of christ anything that opposes uh, the promises of God in our lives. E parato se kila brahande shalida zete libra do santa yaraba rado shaleka zita libra do sata libra. I come against you in the name of Jesus. E brato se libra hande ketia. I silence the noise of lack. I silence the noise of delay. I silence the noise of fear. I silence the noise of confusion. I silence the noise of uncertainty. I silence the noise of worry. I silence the noise of 
shame and embarrassment. E kayabo santelia remo jali gazi bayeta reto to libra suta yada rando zeki la brasete reto zalibra to sataya rando zata yara any interference with our court tonight. E bratu zeli katia I get you out of the way in the name of Jesus. E rabo satima majoto lia reto zakida we cast down arguments we cast down imaginations anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God in our lives in the name of Jesus be silent we want to hear our father's voice tonight in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we are praying hallelujah Acts of the Apostles Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 21 it says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a glorious assurance. Now it is time for us to make that call. You know the situation in your life. You know where God needs to answer right now. In your health, anywhere, in your marriage, consigning your business, consigning your children, it is time. The heaven is open. Take whatever position you need to take. Take whatever. Do not allow anybody to distract you right now. If there's a television playing in your, in your living room right now and it's not this service, please turn it off. If there is a friend talking to you right now that would distract you and she's, he or she is not part of this service, please excuse yourself. This is a matter of destiny. This is where you get to make the call. Mareko zila brasotelia reko zateli brahande kesia connect to heaven consigning the affairs of your life consigning the issues of your life e rabo satila brosetia e bayakoza lebresita every situation that does not align with the promises of God with the heart of the Father consigning you begin to call them to order right now e baroto lika zebra handa majeto libra kezalia invite God formally yes to that area of your life that you've been struggling with e kalibra sotema yadosha mareko zila de mazuta yaka ibra hende someone you've been struggling with addiction addiction to alcohol you want to stop but you cannot stop you want to stop but you see yourself going back after every two three days now this is the time to settle it tell the father invite him to that situation tell him father i want to stop this habit i want to stop this habit help me holy spirit begin to intercede for yourself and i cause that spirit of addiction in your life right now in the name of jesus i cause it to get out of I speak to you, spirit of addiction, that the judgment of the Lord is against you concerning this man, this woman, under the sound of my voice. Uh, lose your grip in the name of Jesus. Every overwhelming situation. Heaven hears our call tonight. Heaven hears our call tonight. Heaven hears our call tonight. In our health, in our marriages, in our profession. In our ministry, in the name of Jesus, heaven is attentive. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, press, ask for that healing. It is yours. God is listening, He's ready to answer. Ask for that healing. That healing, Mareko Satibra, Handeke Shila Rosa, in Dozila Deba Sata. It is not his will for you to remain in sickness. It is not his will for you to keep going back and forth with the doctor, irrespective of what the diagnosis is. Speak now. Make the call now. Heaven is listening. 
Ecclesia, Retele Frecete Librosoto, Rina Nanamashante Libra Cosa, In La Brosite Libra de la Bosha, Le Cabo Zante Libra Hande Cesibra Rosa, In La Dosha Libra Hande Casile Bros, Izelegere de la Bosha Talia, Ribaba Sete Librosita, Rimama Sante Limanana, Mazoto Liga Libre de Re, Mazoto Liga Labra Hande Cesia, Mazoto Libre Gazetila, Mazeke Telebresia, Mazoto Lika, Father, I stand and I decree for everyone making that call right now. E bazute leke zita libra answers in the name of Jesus. Ibra tu senta la da da. Mazoto lika yebra da 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 boss. Ila brosina na mashanta libra. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amos chapter three, verse seven. Amos three seven. Lord. The Bible says, surely the Lord does nothing. Surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So things that are happening around the world, even including COVID, there are people that God had revealed to them. God said he will not do anything upon the earth without revealing that to his prophets. So we are going to pray. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, reveal to me things ahead of time, things concerning my destiny. Let life not take me unaware. It is so difficult to be in a situation where life happens to us. We are not the ones happening to life. Every time we are trying to catch up with life, we, don't know, we seem to know nothing, like no clue what a situation to be but it, it it shouldn't continue like that the bible says he will reveal to us he reveal things to us so pray god reveal things to me consigning my destiny consigning my life consigning my career every area of your life that you need god to reveal his heart for you to you please intercede for yourself in the name of jesus christ i ask oh god that you reveal to me things consigning my destiny Things consigning my destiny, maritally, financially, economically, in the name of Jesus, in my ministry, reveal to me things that I know not about myself, consigning my ministry, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I decree for everyone under the sound of my voice that you reveal to them, let your gracious illumination begin to penetrate into their spirits right now. Ah, mareko satima hando satila rose, e labrosha kalabahande kesila, indo zelebro sika yerebosa, rando jamalaba sante libra hando, i kayebra do sinta libra hando selia, reto zaleka zi Bread de bo shanta libra, mazute leke zebra da, mareko zita libra dosa. I decree uh, over everyone under the sound of my voice. You are not at the mercy of life. You are not at the mercy of life. Life does not take you unaware. Life does not take you by surprise because the Father reveals His heart to you, consigning every aspect of your life. E la masute le rendo jaliga zebra tiza endo libra hande kesila. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone under the sound of my voice right now you are at the place where you you are about to make a decision you don't know whether to send your son abroad to school or whether you should let them school in Nigeria God says he's giving you an answer of peace right now at the end of this service you will know exactly what decision is best for your son whether he schools abroad or he schools in Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus Yes, Lord, consigning that ailment, reveal your heart, Lord. Make azute lelele, redo jalibra hande kasira dos, e zalibra hende lebrosia, ribabo zate li kazute lia, mazute leke zibra tata, majeke lebrosia toba zete, rando zike lebrosia dosa, mare katuse leke zibra dosa, majeke lebrosia dadaba, mazute lia. Someone, you are listening to me right now, you think that you are in your 
office just to earn salary. God say he has bigger things for you, bigger stuff for you, better assignment for you, that it is all about him and not you. Begin to ask him to show you, why am I in this company? Why am I with this organization at this particular time? That he begins to reveal to you, Emaroto Sikaya, Mazonto Lima Hande Kesia, Retele Freki Zotia, Indalima Zotelia, Rando Bajekele Brosia, Indalibra Rose Kele Brosia, Ile Fretele Gedebra Santa Libra Handosa, Imbazotelia, Reco Bazetelia, Mazote Libra Dosa. Yes, Holy Spirit, shine your light into the area of our lives that we need illumination. E Mazutelia, Mazute Kete, Mazeke Lebrosia, take the heart of the Father and reveal to us. Ibazutelede, Majanteli Kayorobosa, Retele Fretele Kozoto Libra Sata, in the name of Jesus. Maredo Sibrahande Kesila Rosh. Zante mananama shante libra dosia riba zute leke libra dosa mte libra hande kesia rila lo shalibra hande kesibra hando lika zida dosa in Jesus mighty name we are praying amen Isaiah 45 verse 3 Isaiah 45 3 I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I the Lord who called you by your name? I'm the God of Israel. I'm the God of blessing. You can put your name there. Now, we are going to pray that the Lord opens our eyes. You pray for yourself. That the Lord opens your eyes to see hidden treasures. Hidden treasures in your business. Hidden treasures in your marriage. Hidden treasures in your ministry. Let God just show you business secrets. Let God show you winning formula. Because he said, I will show you the hidden treasures. I will show you riches in secret places that nobody has been able to uncover. That you will come up with a winning formula, strategy, because God is showing you. In the name of Jesus, let's open our mouths and pray that prayer. Consigning my ministry, Lord, open my eyes. To see hidden treasures. Deeper understanding. Consigning my ministry, Lord, I ask, oh God, that you give me a strategy. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, what has not entered into the minds of men and women before. Father, release them to them in the name of Jesus. Open their hearts, oh God, in their environment, in their place of work in their ministry, in their marriage. Give us winning secrets, trade secrets, Lord. How to raise godly children, how to build godly homes. How to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Yes, yes, yes. For someone, that is what God is telling you. That is what God is showing you. That your, your, your healing, it will open your eyes to see healthy lifestyle practices that you will do to ensure your healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Hidden treasures. Riches in secret places. In for someone, God is giving you the capacity to do the business you are doing right now in an entirely different way. You are doing that business in an entirely different way, like nobody is doing it right now. And how you know, you can Google it. When God drops that idea in your heart, go to Google and ask. You won't find anybody who is doing exactly the way God will be giving it to you. That is how you will know. 
mazute lekete refrete li gazota ya mazute leketi brahande kasuta reno zina ni mashute leke raposa lira rabo santa ya mazike libro sita lira endo bazite le debo shantalia reko zita libra tuse dia yes lord masa telia mazon telebrosia enko libra rabo someone you are listening to my voice right now someone approach you with a business proposal like a partnership and be around the lockdown period and that contract that he gave you the, the agreement um, the agreement document you have not signed it you have been reluctant but you don't know why it looks like a good deal God says he's giving you answers right now in the name of Jesus Christ that at the end of this meeting you know exactly what decision you need to make concerning that business partnership in the mighty name of Jesus Father cause your word to perform it cause your word to perform it cause your word to perform it thank you Holy Spirit in Jesus' name we are praying. Finally, Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him and he will show them his covenant. We talked about how it is that you cannot make a call to someone you do not know. It is people who know God, who reverence God, who, 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 who takes God as their everything that God reveals his heart to. That's the, the, they are the ones with the secret of God. So we are going to pray tonight for the grace to come into a place of sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit because that is how you get to know God. And the more you get to know God, the more reverence you have for him, the more love you will have for him. And the more you build that closeness, the more you will know about the secret so it is a personal prayer father i ask for the grace to come into a place of sweet fellowship with the holy spirit a closeness with you that will evoke reverence in my life for you in the name of jesus let's open our mouth and pray that prayer like apostle paul where i pray tonight that i may know you lord and the power of your resurrection bring me closer to yourself i ask for a release of grace upon your people a grace to hunger after you to want to know you to want to be intimate with you Bring God sir, to the place of sweet fellowship with the Spirit of God. Someone under the sound of my voice, you are beginning to hear Satan speak to you that this is where your destiny ends that there is nothing more to your life, that there's nothing more life has to offer you. That's a life from the pits of hell. But you're beginning to believe it. Why? Because you have allowed the, 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 the fire on your altar to die. God said he's rekindling that fire right now. He's giving you that sparkle back and you have to run with it. And I come here and I assure you this evening, your destiny does not end here. There is so much that God wants to still do with your life. So you are not giving up on life and you are not giving up on God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for the grace to build that altar of prayer back, that fire that you have for God. God is restoring to you the joy of your salvation, the joy and the zeal you felt. You, you felt when you first said yes to Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we are people of intimacy with divinity. In the name of Jesus, we know you as we are known. In the name of Jesus, Ebrakosa Libra Handekesia, sweet fellowship sweet fellowship that is not built uh, on what is going on in the world on what is going on around us in the name of Jesus Christ grace Lord in Jesus name amen let's begin to thank God and appreciate him he has heard us he has answered our prayers in the name of Jesus thank him for this call that you are able to make to him was an awesome privilege father we thank you we thank you you are the God who hears us always we give you praise lord thank you thank you unto you who do exceedingly abundantly 
above all that we can ask or imagine. Father, we thank you. Sweet Holy Spirit, thank you for the joy of sweet fellowship, sweet communion with you. We give you praise, mighty God. Thank you, Father, for answers. Thank you, Lord, for showing us great and mighty things that we couldn't figure out on our own. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for praying. I am so excited because we have answers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll be taking our offering right now. It's a privilege. You know, like we heard um, on Sunday in church, one of the ways to go about the Father's business is to be sure that we let our resources be used of him. His resources, actually, because there is nothing that we have that God has not given unto us. And it is not about us. It is about him and his kingdom. So you can let go of what is in your hand right now and be sure that it is serving a higher purpose. Praise the Lord. I will pray for our offerings. Um, the, the details for, for the transfer, it's on your screen, so you can just make the transfer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege to give to you. Everything that we have in our lives, you have given to us, Lord. So we do not hold back tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we release that which is in our hands, that it will be used for the, the, the benefit of your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask that you bless every hands that give tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, and for someone who do not have to give, but they have the desire, Lord, I ask that you will bless them. So next time, they will be able to give to you. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for staying with us for service tonight. It's an awesome, it's been an awesome time. I know that the heaven for sure is open over us. God has received our calls and we are getting back answers. So this week, as you continue in this week, you will continue to see answers in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray as we close. Father, we thank you for the awesome privilege to worship you. Thank you for the time spent in your presence. Father, thank you for the great and mighty things that you have revealed unto us. Thank you because we go the rest of the week, the rest of the month, the rest of the year with this consciousness that we, when we call, that you will answer us. Thank you tonight because needs have been met. Thank you because tonight problems have been solved. Thank you because puzzles have been unraveled and questions have been answered. We give you praise, Lord. Keep us, O oh God, together again. And when we gather back on Sunday, we will glorify your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you. Good night.